<laughs> Just not freezing time until <laughs> 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 Okay, we're on. So uh, we're here for the uh, October 30th uh, Joint Town Council Board of Ed uh, workshop slash finance meeting. And uh, we have four agenda items. Uh, not a lot of presentation material. I guess we might have something on the, from, the, from the Board of Ed on uh, Eight Corners, the Eight Corners update. But uh, we thought we would revisit a couple of items uh, having to do with uh, perhaps uh, developing a uh, joint statement or a, a recommendation to our respective uh, boards and councils uh, on um, targets uh, to be used for metrics for the, the coming budget year, fiscal year 2021. It's kind of the first issue. So it's just a discussion item. There's no, uh, no agenda or materials, just sort of uh, talking about how people feel about that. I know we had a detailed presentation last time, uh, especially going through the, uh, the Board of Ed numbers. And um, so I don't know whoever would like to lead off on that or recap. I wasn't here, so. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys take it back to the full board to discuss? Because I, so you guys presented to us a theoretical goal, and we all agreed that that doesn't necessarily be, need to be set right now. Um, and I felt like that we left it, that you would check, check the temperature of the entire board. If that's not the case, I think that's completely fine. I think a good objective for this conversation is, do we both go back to our respective bodies and say, hey, this is what we're thinking. Do we get approval? Yeah, so. I think because Sarah wasn't here at the last meeting, we decided, and Peter wasn't here, so we oh, tabled sure. the discussion on first versus second reading. Yeah. And so I think before we were going to bring it back to our respective board, we wanted to have that okay. be part of the conversation. That makes sense. Okay. So that's really the second agenda item is to talk about the, the calendar and what we would expect in terms of uh, objectives and output for the first and second readings. What are the purpose, of, you know, what are the expectations for those meetings and approximate timing so that we we felt that we wanted to make sure we were setting re reasonable yeah. expectations for, for both groups on that. And there was some uh, some feelings were expressed about last year and in the past, we, we kind of put a lot of pressure on the board of that because they don't know what they don't know at certain times and we're still expecting them to come forward with an answer. So yeah, that was really the reasoning of that, of that one. Um, so uh, as I recall, what we had talked about was it seemed like there was a developing consensus around uh, agreeing on using mill rate again and adding that expenditure and you know, percentage and that expenditure increase for the uh, school side for the school yeah. and is that just for the school or well, ultimately the also for the town okay. um, and uh, so is is there a need for more discussion or is, is there you know I'd just like to hear how people feel about that at a high level mm -hmm. at a high level of consensus is that something that people feel they would be able to support? And, and then I suppose take back to their respective committees and, and get it endorsed so we can bring it forward. Yeah, so I'll start. I, <clears throat> I, I maintain that I don't, I don't personally think the mill rate of 3% is the best goal, but I am, I'm standing down. I think that it has its merits and that's been articulated. So moving off of that, I think that what we had discussed last week was a very, I feel like it was has some very positive reception to it. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, I don't need, I don't personally need more discussion surrounding it. I feel like a, it was a great balance between giving the school board a little more of a compass and letting us articulate to the public that, you know, hey, the school number isn't necessarily the 3%. So where I walked away from that meeting was, let's wait to get Peter's input and Sarah's input because they weren't here, and then we'll go. So I think Peter and Sarah are the ones that were, yeah. Oh, sure. Put it yeah. in our, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's throw yeah, the ball. There it is. Yeah. 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 I'm all done. Yeah. You're all done. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I just, just point of clarification, Peter, you can go first if you want. But the, so in here it says mill rate. Was it, were you guys, did you agree on the 3% mm -hmm. rate or just mill rate as a? Well, I think we agreed on the mill rate. I don't think we confirmed yet what the percentages would be either for the mill rate or other metrics should we, you know, feel there's a consensus behind adding an additional one. So uh, and that, that's in spite of the fact that we had a detailed presentation from the Board of Ed, I think from, uh, 
from a governance standpoint or a process and approval standpoint, we would probably want to go through uh, additional discussion and approvals on that. Um, so I, I, I don't know if we're uh, able or willing to confirm um, numbers associated with the metrics from this committee. So that's, that's just sort of my, you know, a question I would have. Totally comfortable with confirming the metrics, but not quantifying them yet. So I, I think the math that we were presenting at the last meeting were, was based on the idea that we had been given the 3% target in the past few Correct. years. Yes. 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 And what was the school side change that was able to drive down to that 3%. Yep. Right. So if we are going with a, a no numbers um, approach to the larger group, then we would have to say, you know, this would be the, the way that we would do the math. Yeah. And yeah. depending on the target, we'd work our way backwards. And I think we were okay with sticking with the 3% goal. I think it was more, we didn't, I think April expressed concern last time. We just didn't want to, the school board, I think you guys threw out 4.45. That was very. 5.61. Okay, 5. <laughs> That's I think it was budget goal. 2.12 2. or something, Stop you know, it. but it was. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. I've got it here on paper. I'm going to like it again. I guess it was Sir. more, it didn't make, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts. It's early. I, I, I think that's what Don was saying. I think from the council side, I don't see us moving off that 3% goal, but I could be wrong. I mean, that goal's not going to become 2% all of a sudden, is it? Or I don't know. Okay. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess a question I had in, because I wasn't here last time, when, so Tom, I think this is kind of directed at you. So if, if, if I thought, I think you guys arrived, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, what you guys, was it five? Five, what, six, one. Five, six, one, and that's because you look back historically and that's about what it's been? Correct, it was the geometric mean, which yeah. I'm not gonna pretend to know how to come up, but Kate can give you a dissertation on that. April and I, <laughs> and I have worked. So my on question that. on that, though, was, so if, if that is 5.61, what does the municipal side yeah. have to be to get to the three percent, that was the part of the equation I didn't know. And then I, in the past, what we've had, which we haven't had at this point in this conversations, are what I mean, we've called them the past drivers. What unusual things do we know? Right. And I know for the town, there's going to be some unusual things. I mean, we have the first CEA TIF payment that's going to come out of our revenue for the down because they'll be appraised what Tom they'll be in the April appraisal right for whatever they got developed yeah, over there it wasn't tremendous value as of April 1st uh, next year will be the, the notable change right so the budget will be next year's yeah, I, it's the budget we're yeah, working on right yeah and so that's going to be a, a big revenue outflow I mean, it's 40 percent of whatever that value is right and that value didn't exist before so right. it's, it's a percentage of the number that we we're not accustomed to or not it. counting on but that's the well, service but, provision but, costs that we have that we didn't so but we'll still have a the, but the problem becomes which is going to be the age-old question we will still have the town services we have to provide which will drive your line item budget sure. and we've always had a dollar of tax revenue to offset those costs so as you develop the budget as we develop the budget it's going to be if we pay out 40 percent of that increased value does that create a a net deficit for you when you yeah. put together your budget. So, so that's we we'll have sixty cents rather than a dollar to offset costs. Yeah, right. To provide service, and that that may be true or not. But I think that's that's something. Then we've got we're likely to have we're going to lose the Walmart Sam's revenue, the abatement, the yeah. abatement that we just negotiated, yeah. and it's likely there's going to be an outcome for Piper Shores. All of those things are pretty significant dollars. But I have a question to those abatements. So that wouldn't we wouldn't take the charge of the full abatements. It would just be the first year charge, the 2021 portion of that. Correct. Okay. So. Yep. And I, it, correct. I I know there's a there's a 30 year projection for the downs, and I think we're expecting somewhere. This is, I, I don't want to throw out a number recklessly, but I feel like it was about $100,000 the first year, $120,000. Is that like a? Enough. It's in the documents. So. Yeah, right. Yeah, and yeah. I think it took four years for us to get to zero, right, or three years. Well, so, I don't remember anymore. Yeah. But yeah. Neither do I. Moving, yeah. Sure. But I mean, I'm saying that those projections, have, at least at minimum, we should have, they have been made so we can at least. And, and, and the problem is, though, is that in those projections, 
the problem became the first things are going to be built yeah, residential, totally right. yeah, which yeah. is where we yep. don't usually collect enough revenue, right. and that's what we're going to be giving back. Yeah. Where we start to turn the corner, yes, is when the commercial comes online, yeah, right? But and I then, think that the projections accounted for that. That's all I was saying. Right, but yeah. it was a, it was a longer. So we just so yeah. as we think about this yeah. at some point, and then I don't know if there's any additional revenue on the school side for special. I think last year there was some adjustment to the. So, so in the past, we just kind of have a list of, okay, what are the unusual things that we know are coming that are going to put pressure on the budget? Mm -hmm. What does that do? How does that alloc get allocated between the two, the two areas? And then what does that look like? So key variables. Yeah, drivers or whatever it may be. Um, so that would be helpful in trying to set that net margin goal is to understand some of those things. Because I think, Tom, it's going to be, my guess is that if if it's 5.61 percent your net budget even though you have excise tax it keeps producing for you um and so i think it'd be important for you just to weigh in just say does that work for you or not as you look ahead and what you need well we did the same exercise we looked at yeah. to uh, fiscal year 15 and and actually beyond that, a five year and a ten year that five year and ten years so the five year average uh, net budget increases 2.43 your average was 2.59. Okay. To be compared to Click five, one. Six, one. Okay. And it's worth noting, with the exception of one year, in spite of those increased costs on both the town and school side, with the increased valuation, we've been able to meet the budget goal of less than 3% of increase in tax rate, yeah. with the exception of one year. So, just be your 18. So, I guess a long winded way of saying, you guys it sounded like you arrived at three ish is still the target for the mill rate. I think we were operating under the few of us were concerned pro probably just me now I'll think about it about the three percent mill rate goal. And then I believe that you two and, and other counselors have articulated yeah, very well why it is a good goal. It's not perfect, why it is a good goal. So I think we said, okay, let's keep that, but how could we make that easier for both bodies, deliver. correct, yes. for yes. the school and for the communication to be better. So I think the solution to that was if we could reverse engineer their goal. Right, which sounds like Correct. That. So I, I don't think our 3% mill rate that we've been doing for the last six years was even in the discussion. Yeah. Once it was yeah. pretty clear that, okay, we're going to use that again. Yeah, which we used it as a, is a, for the working example, correct. but I don't think we either confirmed it or Yeah, sure, it absolutely. At, right. at this point, right. so... I, the thing that I, it keeps rolling around in my in my head is, uh, you know, unforeseen things. You know, other what what are other events that could happen? Um, you know, uh, and it mainly from the debt side, I'm trying, I'm, you know, trying to anticipate what those might be, or or you know, uh, expense related to replace debt. If, for example, we do something with a community center or whatever, those kinds of things would have a tremendous. Yeah impact on the assumptions we've discussed so far well i think if <clears throat> you know peter mentioned three uncertainties that are essentially a loss of revenue then that's just going to put downward pressure on that's that's for tom to deal with yeah right <laughs> i mean i mean I, well. I mean i'm i mean because that's going to that's going to make the three percent goal harder and more difficult yeah. to reach for tom so a, a reaction to that loss in revenue would be to actually increase the goal of 3%, and I don't see, foresee that happening. So I guess that would be my point. Would be the point would, <clears throat> the appropriate reaction to all this uncertainty of the loss of revenue would be, oh, okay, then our goal is 4% increase. Because we have to offset that loss of revenue. And I don't think that's ever going to happen with our council. I don't think we're going to say, oh, by the way, after last year and the reval that we're going to say, oh, we're going to increase yeah, that goal to 4%. So I guess my point is, Peter's stuff is valid, but that's a headache Tom can deal with if we're going to set the well. And from the school side, like I would be hard pressed to say that we're going to develop our budget contingent on a bunch of things that are floating around that yeah. are yeah. uncertainties yeah. on the town side. Yeah. Well, yeah. just because we do have to build a budget, yeah. like we that that reflects our needs independent yeah. of whether or not the town is at a loss of revenue this yeah. year. Well, but and that's but, not to say that when the two pieces come together, Peter, it's not <laughs> to say when they come together that it won't that we're going to miss the goal. But I would rather put forth a budget that represents what this what the school needs yeah. and then discuss the reasons why 
we're going to be above that 3% goal, unless it was something that you could say right now, you know, we know that everyone needs, everybody needs to tighten their belts across the board. And this is going to be a directive for every department and, and, but that's not, we're not able to do that. Well, but that, but that's where I was going saying, so, so if we really are committed to one town and one budget, yeah. there have been times when the municipal side has pulled back on things or not. I, you know, some of the public safety folks didn't get raises one year to try to make the numbers work. Yep. And that's just, that's what I was trying to set up okay. going in this year. We've got some things that are beyond Tom's control. I mean, yeah. you know, the, I mean, the Walmart yeah. Sam's piece. So it was my roundabout way of asking, is the town this year going to need, okay. do we need to no. tighten the belts across the board? If we need to tighten the belts across the board, how do you do that? Okay. And, and again, this kind of jumps ahead to the other conversation we're going to have again. I hear that, you know, in the past, what we've presented is what we think we need or want. And then, oh. and then try to go on the treasure hunt to find how do we get from there back to where we get back to 3% in a week's time, which tends to be really stressful. And again, what we had talked about, Tom's model has been the town side is whatever goals are set, deliver that number, but then talk about what is not going to be done. So, I mean, Tom, Tom has delivered things in the past saying, here's the budget that meets the numbers, but we need three more you know, police officers, and here's why. And then the departments come forward and they make their case for why that is a good thing for us to think about investing in. So it's it's the model. We want to change the model of how we do it. And and so I thought we were trying to gravitate to that type of model of saying, here's the numbers that deliver what we've said, but there's some real shortfalls of things mm -hmm. we can't do. So, so I have an actual, so I have like a, a logistical question, I guess. Um. Uh oh, you closed your camera. <laughs> <laughs> She's close. Let me put down my pen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a lot. I am taking a lot over here. Um, so, um, and now I've totally lost my train of thought. If, if, if Tom, if we deliver our budget, the superintendent and Tom work together closely for the month of March, Tom has an idea of where the school is going to come in. You know, we, we're all scrambling in those final weeks. Whose decision is it to present a budget that hits the 3% goal? Is it Tom's discretion? I'm literally asking. Is it yeah. Tom's discretion to say, in order to present the town council with a 3% mill rate increase budget, I have to tell the school that they need to take $250,000 out of this tonight? That's a good question. No, I, my answer, I think, is no. I mean, I think what we were trying to get to would be one town, one budget. That I think, Tom, you can talk a little. I mean, the models in the past is that somehow there is just a dialogue that takes place, and maybe the dialogues at this table. How do we come together and present to the community a number that meets whatever target? Now we haven't even talked about whether. I mean, maybe we change the target. But, but the concept of a 30,000 mile view. And so it would be how do both parties come to the table and somehow figure out how we can get there, at least talk about the choices. I, I don't think it's. I just don't understand. When you like, say I in literally the past, just don't you, understand the logistics we, as last year. So what do you mean when you say in the past, is, are you referring to what? I don't know, Tom, maybe. I mean, no, haven't, I haven't, I haven't you and the superintendent? Somewhat in the past worked as as April had suggested as you get closer and you kind of know where the numbers are. Yeah, I certainly exert control and authority and direction on my direct staff mm -hmm. on the town side, and but I don't see it my role to mm -hmm. uh, direct cuts on the, on the school side. That's not my responsibility. Yeah. So um, we're all working feverishly up to the final hours. I often don't see the final school budget proposal until a couple of days before the books are collated, right. frankly. So in spite of the fact that Sandy and I will be in conversation, that is literally right up to the wire. Right. And so we simply fold that in, and then we see the impact um, literally hours before you all see it. Well, yeah. And so I just don't know like how, given that that is the scenario that we know is going to play out, I just don't see how we can work 
better toward a goal that we can't, that we don't have the final calculation until all the pieces are on the table in front of us. Doesn't this have a lot to do with what the expectation is at first reading? Versus I think that's second a, reading. We're, we're more moving. Yeah, I agree. Are we, are we getting agree. to that question? Uh, yeah. Because I think in, in the past, to Peter's point, we have collaborated very well, but at first reading, we've come out with a proposal that doesn't meet the target on many occasions. Last year was the first time it was like, nope, sorry, we're 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 going for three percent today. And I think that we really need to be clear. Which way is it? It doesn't have right. to be three percent at first reading because that is going to involve a different approach um, for Tom and Ruth and, and me and Sandy. And I think it comes down to a trust factor that we are in this together. That through the course of budget review, that uh, proposals are going to be heard and understood and maybe added back in, and the end result is over the goal. Um, my sense is that the folks on the school side have had some concern that. Uh, you know, they, they want to make sure the starting point includes uh, everything they think is, is necessary to the extent that they know it at the time. And that's certainly informed over time as well. Um, as Peter said, I've typically taken the approach of trying to meet the goal at first reading and then making a very clear argument. And the Finance Committee has been receptive to my staff to make those arguments. You know, These are the sorts of things that, that aren't in this budget. And sometimes we're able to fund them, and sometimes we aren't. It's a, it's a different approach. Can I just uh, just clarify one thing, though, Tom? When you say you've tried to meet the goal, how can you know if you've actually met the goal if you haven't seen our point? So when you're going to present, I, I can't possibly. Um, that I, I don't. Okay. Um, all I can control is what I can control. Exactly. So, uh, so, so you're kind of looking at your net budget numbers the way that we yeah, do. Exactly. So I think what Tom's saying that what he delivers on his side of the house is something that's close to the mill rate target, whatever that is. Yeah, it, it, that, the general rule of thumb, it, in the final analysis, the school's net budget increase can be less than 5%, around 5% ideally, and ours is less than 3%. When you factor in the valuation and the final analysis, that's how we've consistently, and we've demonstrated it over time, we meet the goal in the end. So when I say I'm meeting the goal, it's, it's uh, for, for the things I can control. For the expenditure increase. And then, yeah. as Peter said, in, in certain budget seasons where there are particular challenges, particularly with revenue loss on the school side, that's been the Pretty biggest thing one. to deal with, we've had to go deeper. And, and those extra things aren't funded, and we've actually had to cut further to get us to a point. I guess what I would like to understand, maybe from Kate and Tom, is if we were going to to meet the goal, meaning the three if it's three, the three percent mill rate combined as a step as a school and town at first reading, what would need to change for your process? Yes, yeah, that's exactly. Right. Yeah, right. That's what we're trying to get. That's to. what yes. I'm trying to understand. What like, to tell, uh, so. tell us why you that's tell bad, me, right? or tell us why it's more difficult, or why it changes. Because I think it's coming across like the school doesn't want to meet the goal. I, I just don't know how to meet the right. goal. No, it, so I think that was part of the conversation this year we're going to try to have early is, right. you know, I mean, my only learning after doing this for a long time and a lot of budgets that didn't pass and are really ugly, as everybody knows, the ugly stuff that starts up, if we give a goal and we don't deliver that at first read, before we even can have conversations, folks are off and running. And that's what's always created sort of that tension. Last year, it wasn't done, it wasn't pretty, but once but once we delivered that, it stayed quiet for a while so we could get through our deliberations on how we were going to navigate to get there. Yeah, the yelling and screaming happened at first reading. Yeah. It was more shock and awe. Yeah. 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 We didn't have this conversation, right? Yeah. That's that's the 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 thing. Thing. And that's all I think right. that we're, we're right. just so, trying so, to agree on right. what those yeah. definitions are. But I think so, there's so a think perception, so. though. I'm sorry. Go no, good. There's a perception that if and I've seen this also called first and second passes with, with budgets. They typically, um, you know, folks come in high and then they get whittled down to a lower number. So the thing that was different this past year was that we didn't approve the higher number of the first pass uh, from the school. We approved a number that was equal to what we thought would deliver 3%. Three, three and added stuff back in. And then added in right. to get to the second pass. Right. And that that is a was yep. a huge process change, huge mindset change. Um, and, you know, I think we can debate whether that was, you know, productive or not. But uh, 
I, I just don't know how you develop budgets, you know, without, uh, you know, trying to uh, be clear about whether you, you know, how serious are you about a first pass or otherwise is we don't really care and it's just, you know, we're, we're going to do the fighting at the end. Uh, well, so I would argue, I've said this before to Tom, and I, to me, I think it's, it actually ends in a, in a more robust budget if you do it the way Peter has suggested and the way that we did it this year. It is easier, it is easier than the first headline is that the goal is met, that the goal is met, and then everybody's happy that people said and did what they would do, and then you can say, okay, we can move, we need to move off this because we have to staff a new public safety building and we're four short if I are men. So I would argue that if everybody's ultimate goal is to get the most robust needs, we, the budget was passed by a three to one margin this year. That wasn't a mystery. That was because people were satisfied with the fact that the, the quote goal was met. At the end, we added in, I think somewhere in the, in the neighborhood of 200,000 extra dollars in expenditures. Small adjustments really. Right. Yeah. And so when, when we look historically at why does the budget fail repeatedly, it's because trust is perceived, I'm not saying, but it's perceived to be broken right out of the gates. And so, to me, it shouldn't take too much calculus to understand, okay, well, what was different? And I don't think that doing a 3% goal and then up presentation means that Tom is going against essentially his, you know, what, his, oh, do you take an oath of office? What do you take? What are you, what are you required to do? Sign the contract. <laughs> contract. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so, I, that's, that's my piece. So I, and, I, and I guess it, it's really hard for us to understand like why, you know, and I think from our mind, we're like, why aren't Sandy and Tom talking every day and saying, okay, this is where we're at. And, and I understand it doesn't work that way because you're two separate departments. But I think from our perspective, it's. You know, what I've heard from school colleagues in the past, and if we can use last year's example. Yeah. You two lived through that, all of us did, except for Sandy. You know, there were these exorbitant special ed costs and some other things that I don't think we had any choice. These are, these are legal mandates we need to meet. Uh, and there was a feeling, I think, that uh, they would be irresponsible or remiss by not putting those on the table, including those in the budget. Those are the realities of running a public school system um, in this town, given the circumstance. So I think what you're suggesting for us, for them to have met that goal, they would have left big chunks out and arguably not met the needs to educate our, our students. So I think that's an, it's certainly uncomfortable and it might be a responsible position to ask school to take and I'm just using last year's example mm -hmm. yeah uh, I have more flexibility on my side we can choose not to hire the fire fireman it's going to cost us more in time and slightly slower response time but uh, that's that's a bit different than 20 year 60 new kindergartners showing up on day one and expecting to have a seat to sit in but was the was the building on that point was the feeling on the on the school side that you were meeting basic needs that would level services would have been delivered with the first reading number? If we, we didn't know now, go back and, and think about what the amendment was, it was never clear to the school department what portion of that reduction the school was supposed to have met. You didn't identify where the so we didn't so so we didn't take that we didn't take any we set number back from from our budget. I can't answer that question. I remember that now. Yeah, you didn't change your number. That wasn't, I get it. It's a process. I mean, two things, Tom, I'd, I'd come back and, mm -hmm. you know, present that a little differently. At the first read, when it was 3%, when it did include the special needs that we needed to do, we still arrived at 3%. What it, what it, what it did is it, it caused everybody go back and say, what are the things that you need to do? What, what do you need to do more of and what do you need to do less of? That's part of a budget process. I think in the past, the working relationship had been if we needed to identify numbers, I mean, I can still go back and it was a two-third, one-third ratio that it was a, a negotiation between you as town manager mm -hmm. and the sitting superintendent to say, okay, here's the bogey we got to come up with how are we going to go back and propose how to do that? So that, I mean, that, that's, that was a process that had been used several years. There was some more clarity about where it was going to come from. But I think what we're trying to do last year is to try to create that working relationship. Right. If, but if I hear, so it sounded like you guys, and just because I wasn't there, it sounds like you guys 
the 5.61, which is where we've been historically, it sounded like you guys were comfortable? We hope so. I mean, this is, we, but, our special education costs were, like Tom said, I mean, we couldn't have forecasted that or predicted that. Um, and if we have another year like that where our, you know, unforeseen costs go up, there's a chance that we won't hit that 5.6. We, 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 we need a little bit of flexibility. So, so we had said, you know, we don't know yet how the enrollment numbers are going to change for kindergarten and like that's one of these bigger pieces that is kind of up in the air if it turns out that you know sure. in order to keep enrollment numbers that are comfortable for kindergarten that we have to add a, a teacher that's seventy five thousand yeah. dollars that's you know yeah. we have to we have to have but you don't really know that until i understand late later in the year or even well after we the try and use that, right? yeah we, we yeah. and and by the time we are forming the, the budget book and getting the first reading ready, um, kindergarten registration, like there's at, it's at least circulating out in the, in mm -hmm. the community. And we have mm -hmm. at least some rough numbers through the month of April mm -hmm. to forecast how many incoming kindergartners we're gonna have. And folks are moving, they're typically moving in the spring and getting, you know, getting kids. Yeah, I mean, we, what do we say between 10, we, we about we, 15 percent 15 maybe i was going to say between 10 and 15 percent in addition to what exactly so in addition to whatever we accept in our initial registration we add between 10 and 15 percent for september i think to don's point i mean this is why i keep fixating on first and second reading because for us there's always so much that happens between first and second reading the first week of april is actually kind of late and it's great it's later than we used to do first reading but even then, you don't necessarily have as good numbers on some of those outside sources, um, whether it be revenue sharing or subsidy or insurance costs or, or what have you that are driven from the outside world, including enrollment, until you get to second reading. So for me, it's always been sort of a, um, I think Peter said, you, you start high and you, and you are able to whittle it down. Well, sometimes, yeah, sometimes you well, no. have to whittle it up because something changed to the, to the negative for you. So that's why I keep sort of worrying about the timeline because the further you go into the process, the better your numbers can be. Yeah, we've long uh, talked about um, the first headline that's written. I mean, the way our budget process works, there's a budget article written after that's presentation. A minute. That first and then that. That's the headline that stands for six or eight weeks. Like yeah. no and I think that speaks to Peter's exactly right. point. So yeah. why our, our success last year was that first headline. Six percent. Yeah. Well, we also last said, year. We, I think it said that we had, right? Not last year, it was three uh, percent. Yeah. I think that in large part right. led to the success. Right. So but it's to, to, to yeah. your point, Paul, I think it is a communication issue. Right. And one way around that, and it, it may overcomplicate it, but is to have multiple metrics. Oh, right. I mean, what we know and history is pretty clear is that the school comes in even at first reading at less than six percent net budget increase and the town comes in less than three percent history suggests we're going to end up tax rate less than three percent so we can communicate that as yeah. first reading expectation right and at the end of the day taxpayer you know we are going to get here and we've got the tracker Prove it. That's a great. Yeah, so now right. we're getting a little more refined. I think I like. Yeah. I like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think communicate both those metrics right. of that our goal at first read is yeah. whatever we put on the table. We think it's going to drive a three yes. percent mill rate. Like that. The expectation is a net whatever you guys came up with last time. The five point. Five point six one. Five point three. Five point nine three. Well, at, at the end, right? Yeah, when it was all done. Yeah. So, so really, what we're saying is, the goal for first reading is expenditures, and the goal for second reading is three percent mill rate. Exactly. Right. Essentially, That's yes. Right. How do we articulate that? But yes, right. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, summary. I mean, I think the communication is that we think our that net number will be five point six one. Tom's will be two point. What'd you say, Tom? Nine. Four. four. 2.4. We think that's going to drive a 3% mill rate. That's what we'll deliver. We'll deliver those metrics at the first read. And then we will tweak if we need to tweak from there may be ups and downs between that and the second read. But at least the headline will be, you know, the teams delivered what we committed to. And we need to go back and you need to make sure 
everybody in you know your board agrees and everybody in our board agrees um, it's it's materially no different it just adds a little more um, detail associated with it well it, 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 it is isn't, isn't because it's you also I mean if you think of it like this year with, with the new value of the beacon coming on and stuff you you're forced to put those high those mid low high numbers and we're forced to react to those mill rate numbers right and there's a lot of uncertainty on those and then two weeks later when we get the the beacon comes in or what have you we had a much more refined number so if if we hold if the three percent isn't if the three percent is the isn't what we're because it's, it's a moving target at first reading it really is i mean your range of mill rates on those budget presentations is significant mm -hmm. so if you go net expenditure in the first reading it it is it is different i mean sure for your budgeting process maybe this is just semantics and it doesn't matter to you but for us as decision makers it makes a lot more sense i mean if, if we could get away from projecting mill rate in, at at budget first presentation reading. at first reading that that would be terrific yeah but We've never been able to do that because the yeah. insatiable interest. In well, that I number. think that's because that's the number people care about. That's right? the because that's book. Yeah. yeah. But, but if I, I like the idea of saying we set the goal that the school would have this net budget increase and the town would have this net budget increase, and historically, as you said, Tom, mm -hmm. this has been able to get us to a 3% um, mill rate increase, and we don't expect that anything else will change, and, and that's what we're looking for. Yeah, but it, we have. A more nuanced way and, of saying. If I think it. back to the ten-year history that I have with the schools, I mean, historically the problem has been free fall of revenue. revenue. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of just the volatility, really that, that you know, the, there's certainly expense pieces. Last year was kind of this anomaly where it was expense-driven because we've we've actually stabilized, we've bottomed out. Yeah. Actually, got revenue last year. We got some back. Yeah. And and that stability is going to continue. I don't expect anytime soon we're going to creep out of the minimal mm -hmm. receiver status. So, uh, you know, the likelihood of us continuing to have these big expenditure surprises, yeah, it's there. But um, I tend to think that's going to be, that was more uh, unique to last year. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about that. So my point is, I think you're going to be able to meet that less than 6% pretty easily, given the fact that the revenue side has stabilized. We'll go ahead and keep going. If you're looking at the net number. For a first pass net expenditure target. And again, I think the key is the communication to our community. If what we say is, here's the goals we're going to hold ourselves measurable to the first read, we'll deliver those. Then if it doesn't produce what we need, then we will make the appropriate right. adjustments. I'm very comfortable with that. Yeah. From here to the second read. But at least we deliver out of the gate what we all agreed we thought were fair and reasonable ways to present the budget. If there are extenuating circumstances where there's a wicked shortfall or there's a huge spike in enrollment, those are things then that we can talk about yeah. and say, in public, and, in public and, and say, and right. so we in good faith, you know, met the goals we set, and then we're going to then discuss what we may need to do around that. The only downside, yes. I, I'll just put it on the table, is that at the inception, the three percent goal was. Um, selected for a number of reasons, not the least of which it was a single number that uh, seemed to have a, a level of receptivity, you know, nothing more than that, 3%. Now we're adding a couple more numbers, and whether that makes the communication job that much more difficult, because we haven't been able to communicate 3% very well, have we? <laughs> because it's so far downstream. I and that's, I mean, at least we're going a little bit more upstream on yeah. the first round. Well, the good news is this group needs to have mutual expectations. I mean, I think well, the yes. problem was some counselors, and uh, there wasn't understanding and agreement around this table. And so right. you're not modeling a, you're not, um, there's not a common message. Right? Right. Some counselors say that the school board didn't meet the goal. Oh, right. Yeah. I think that, that that hopefully this then changes that. The goal right. becomes Something we think achievable it's achievable and yeah. understandable. And it's based on your historical sort of track record. It's based on Tom's. It's a reasonable way to say out of the gate, we in good faith think this will deliver what we're talking about. And Tom, I, I, I don't think the 3% was completely random. I mean, the 3% has approximated wages and CPI growth sure. and other things. I mean, in this same time period, seniors have been getting 
much less than that in medicare adjustments and i think this year is we've got those unusual items we're talking about but the reval for some people is still pretty fresh i mean there are some people that have pretty significant increases so clearly that's something that you know we need to speak to so if everybody's agree i mean that i think i think the town council would support that approach what, what do you guys think can i just hear from oh sorry okay. i just want sandy and kate to get an opportunity to weigh in whether or not you guys are supportive of this i think it's a great place to start um and i think people are on some good data from the history so i'm pleased with that and i you know as a public person in my own town i always want to see the needs based you know what what does the budget include or what can't get into the budget? And then that's the hard conversations that, you know, as directors, we have to work towards and come in with a straight face, good budget. Um, but I, I like this conversation. I think it's a good place to start. And it's data driven and uh, we work together and be collaborative. I think we'll get there. Yeah, I'm well, one thing, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable with it because we've gone through this process yeah. and we've, we've as a board team, we've decided that we feel it's achievable. We don't feel like we're shooting ourselves in the foot to commit to something like this. And then, you know, again, with the understanding that if, as Peter says, the you know what hits the fan, we come back and we talk about what happened. And that's not what you said, right? <laughs> but it's what you meant. Isn't it? Yes, it was what I meant. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm comfortable. Good. I think it's a good way to start, really. I think it's more, for me, it feels more achievable. It's measurable. I mean, one thing is different piece. here. If we're specific about a first pass figure, we were talking about 3% mill rate, but we had no way of reconciling to that. So if we come in with 3 and 6% for the town and the schools, respectively, people can hit right. that number and see what's in and out, and we go from there. It's and like the guesswork's gone. Yeah. And then if there's something we need yeah. to add in or yeah. take yeah. out yeah. within that, I forgot either. Yeah. Is it a three week span? I don't even know. But yeah. right. no, I'll just add one more wrinkle. The, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> just the two month or three month delay between when the budget's finalized and when the tax rate's set. You know, people have their feet stuck in the sand. They don't even know that. I, I, I'm right. Big no, sure. Dramatic, but, right. Um, you know, when the budget, budget's approved, there's still this uncertainty. You're still right. not it's, at 3%. We've, yeah. we've made a good guess. Yeah, you're. you're your tax commitment on average has gone up 4.3%. Um, um, hmm? But when you when the final analysis happens right. and the new value is added in and the tax rate is oh. set, you yeah. get there. And it's three months down the road. Okay. Oh, right. I mean, that's, but that's when I say that 3% makes sense because actually the 3% when we calculate it, what it really, there's, there's another 1% to 2% organic growth. So that really hmm. covers so I was just saying the final metric you could add is in second reading at adoption that the neck, the, the tax commitment, which is the money that needs to be raised for property taxes, you we can we can derive a, a target for that as well. Mm -hmm. That one makes sense. Last one makes sense. Because the word tax commitment and tax rate, I think, sound too too yeah, much to say. It's complicated. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but even when you're asking people to make the final vote on the yeah. budget. Sure. Yeah. Um, so this there's still this uncertainty three months down the road. But this might sound bad, but the budget's passed by that. It's a done deal. So out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight. But the tax commitment, no, I, which is the net budget, will change. Yeah, I know. I, I totally understand. So I understand. Understand. Yeah. 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 we don't call it tax commitment. We call right. it net budget, which is what it shows in the, right. on the tax rate calculation. And if you're if you're saying school net budget, town net budget drives to total municipal total net. Yeah, it's pretty, we can, the there's a, I already see the graphic that we can, Yeah, you know, I think you it. could create something totally. that would be fairly simple to yeah. understand. And, and maybe, you know, the bottom line of all that is what actually happened to the mill rate right. historically, right. Uh, or the tax rate. But is that something it, like the communication committees? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can, sorry, can actually yep. put yeah. something yeah. up where? Yeah. She lives out of town. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just live upstairs. It's just, <laughs> just <laughs> let me out <laughs> But, but what, what's good about it, it, it does change the dialogue, because then it can't be, well, they didn't deliver the 3%. It's you right. delivered what you're asked to deliver, then it's a community dialogue about what do we do. Yeah. And, and then it's really, as I think, you know, it's the teams that then have to go back and say, okay, the proverbial 
whatever hit the fan. Anthem and, hit and the fan. And Anthem hit the whatever it may be. Now we need to make adjustments. And now and we need it, to do something. And this is sort of a baby step in the process forward. I mean, Tom's idea may be great, but I think trying to just talk about one change. Right. And yeah. man a manageable yeah. bite and yeah. see how it goes and see if it changes the dynamics and the conversations and all the things that have occurred and see if we can build on what we did last year. Those, that, those extra data points, too, might be, I th like I, Paul said, I can see a graphic. I think it would be cool to have all of those mm. sort of bits as an element of the budget presentations. And then, you know, the communications committee can decide, committees can decide what resonates mm. the most. So we're a week away from elections, and there could be different committees that are assembled to, you know, within the month. Um, I think I know Don's point of having pushing this conversation through the summer and fall was to at least advance that conversation for someone else to pick up and hopefully carry on with. Um, so is there value, Don, and are you intend as soon as next week to report out to council? Yeah, I, so I we can get started. Yeah, yes, get this. Yeah. That was the intent, and I, I think uh, I think what, we, what would be helpful is if there was a joint resolution or some brief statement that could summarize what we, we feel is the consensus that was reached through this workshop exercise and have, you know, have both bodies bring it the same, how about we do the same statement in both bodies? Yes, yes. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you guys have to take action. Well. Okay. I think, I don't necessarily think we need to vote on it, because ultimately it's you guys kind of Bring it down, Brandon. Well, obviously, scheduling on yeah. council and school board agenda would certainly give it prominence. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You wanted to have a joint. So, is your feeling it has to run through committee, through through finance committees first, or we can go from from here to? We're all here. We can have time. Yeah. I would say your next your your last and only opportunity is next week. Yeah. Next week. yeah. All right, so we cut to the chase. So are you, do we, just point of order, because I don't know, are we, is this something we're gonna vote on, or is this something that we're? Yeah, now that I think of it, I think you might be setting up a future council and board event in a month or two. If they disagree with that, right. then they'll have to take some action to disavow um, it. So, so a non-action item. Non item. Non-action item. And reporting yeah. out, I think, would serve right. the same purpose. I, I right. think just the fact that we could report out that we actually came to some agreement. Yeah. Yeah. About but let's let's do it through a statement and let's yes. have yes. just so it's like yeah. that way both both bodies are hearing the exact same mm -hmm. thing. So it's not a binding vote. It's a here's what our finance committees think makes sense at it's this our time. And this is where we're it's our recommendation. Forward. After elections, we'll move forward yeah. on that. The finance conference. committees, yeah. whoever's on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could it be something like we did with the advanced refunding while we didn't get? Yeah, exactly. approval is just tacit approval, if you will. Yep. Yeah. So you just action. need to we frame it, Sarah, when you it. present it to the board, that it's, this is not an action not item. Not this is an agreement that we've we've come to. And this is our recommendation. Our recommendation. Our recommendation. Our yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to pick one of each of a, one from each body to craft it together? Yeah. yeah. I'm happy to take that at first if you want, and I'll share it around. Just Probably easier to have one person do it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's fine with the two chairs. So yeah. yeah. So I can share with you. Do you vote okay. committee reports at your meetings yeah, for the agenda? Yep. Yeah. Which right. happens at the next week's meeting. Yeah. So I mean, there's an ideal opportunity to do it then if you wish. Yeah. To. Can we do yeah. it? Can we do it before the committee reports? I feel like everybody's falling asleep by the time the committee reports. It's over. <laughs> No, just, it's, no, it's, it's a good point. No, I'm serious. I mean, it's, I mean, council, discuss that with your the public. Yeah. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> My input would be non-action <laughs> items separate of a committee. The, to me, I want it to hold a little more water than just a brief update. Yeah, off the cuff update. That would be my one piece of <laughs> So you still haven't opened your computer though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. We just killed. Did we just kill one and two together? We did. Right. We did. And. and so it's just a big, it's a big idea. I and everyone's so feeling so chipper. And we did something. We got something done. Just, <laughs> just to confirm, uh, 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 just to uh, confirm, uh, it's net budget increase 2.4. Three. Yeah, I think. 2.43? No, three. Less than three. Less than three. Yeah, less than or equal to three. Oh, less than three. 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 Less than Less than three. Less than three. Less than 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 Less than
Just on quickly on the calendar, I just wanted to mention that we're trying to get our teams sort of lined up um, in the next two weeks for their in um, in school work and our budget meeting. So I'll probably just talk with Tom about the end dates mm -hmm. and make sure that we're lined up for the public dates as much as okay. possible. Yeah, I mean, I'm good, but it's um, we do. Yeah, I think uh, I've been toting calendars around and wiggling things. There's some weird calendar issues where dates shift a little bit. So yeah, we could put together a draft schedule. Maybe that we could bring back to this team the next time around. Sure. Can I also ask yes. oh, agenda item for next time? Yeah, you guys to look and maybe this is something that we just it's impossible to work around, but to see if we can get the budget the vote before early voting starts. Well that was that was budget. one of the issues because the school budget validation vote, if we do that with the primary this June is actually a week earlier because of the way the calendar falls, because it's the second Tuesday. And last year, the second Tuesday was a whole week later. But I'm sorry, what was your question? Can we have the we have so so this early last year, early voting uh, had begun before we had actually finalized the budget? Uh, yeah, that's not even possible. And, and so was, people had taken year. out, had done early voting without actually knowing. But they can't turn it back yeah. in until the budget has passed. Okay, that makes more sense. So it's, it's so did you know that? They can take the ballot. But what does the ballot can't. say? But what does it say then? It doesn't have a number in it. It does. Just, do you approve the school budget? budget. 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 Don't you have what's kind of operating? Thing? Yeah, because so that's posted. The language. That's that's a posting that goes right, up. But in your point is, people are are yeah. voting on receiving ballots before the before they know the, the answer. Right. right. We'll have to look and see how maybe how that falls. Just something to look at. It's, it's like forty-five days prior to the June primary. That they can start voting. Yeah. Right, and we're tag teaming with the primary because it saves money and it brings people out. Yeah. I mean, it's, it right. just I makes think, sense. I think we still ought to stay on that June primary date as the validation vote date. So then, my, my other question would be to Tody how many people actually <coughs> hand in their ballots prior to the budget? Because if it's a significant number, then we may. I assume she it. says you, you, you can't. Can. Yeah, she won't, she won't, she I won't assume she will day. not. Well, if people mail them, though. But do they just go in the box or something? I don't know. We should ask. That's, that's, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it also may be. Point. It also may be that the school board will have to call a special meeting. Uh, if yeah. We could, you know, which we could. Do. Well, not really, because the budget vote is public, and people there's like. Yeah, generally speaking, the adoption the second the meeting college. adoption is the second meeting in May. Right. Yeah. Oh, roughly, and then we meet the following night. Yeah. It's roughly yeah. thirty okay. days before the vote. If the second reading right, is in, I was thinking in there was a week gap, but. three, then usually what we'll do is we'll have the town council. We do have to have a school board meeting. If there's any changes at the town council meeting, we have to allocate those changes. So that's why we go for that second meeting in May. But the calendar is going to be against us this year because it's kind of squishy. Yeah, let's, let's spend some time. We'll look at this together. We'll see if we can work around that. But the only way is a special meeting or maybe rolling it up. Just, just a little bit. The first and second, uh, second meeting in April. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So a little background before we move into number three. Um, so you guys had obviously approved the use of, or we approved the funding for the Eight Corners project last year. Um, so we wanted to come back, and I had briefed Don on this a couple weeks ago, so he may have shared it with you. We wanted to come back and give you everyone an update on um, where we are with expenses and spoiler alert, we are over. Um, there is no action required at this point because not all the final numbers are in yet, but we just wanted to give you guys a heads up so you're aware and discuss what our, some of our possibilities are in terms of funding or overage. Um, sort of get a temperature check from you guys on, on what those options are. So that's the background. Okay, I don't know if you have any. Um, no, I would just uh, repeat what Sarah just said, that we don't have all the bills in. So what you're looking at is a document that I pulled together, um, a version of for our finance committee meeting the last time we got together. Um, and it's been just kind of a running update for me. Um, the green blocks are bills that we've either already paid or we've got a purchase order out there so it's committed. And then the yellow blocks are um, either a quote's been given to us or an estimate of what the, the costs will be. And um, 
you know, the short version of the story is that when we asked for $260,000, we didn't know what we didn't know. And um, one of the biggest drivers in pushing us over budget has been um, the fact that the fire marshal's office told us that they that we needed to put in new sprinkler system and that meant we needed to put in a drop ceiling and a couple of things that we just really didn't expect in this modular building we thought we could just connect it to the full to the uh, main building um, there's a lot of detail on here it's basically again just a running tally of what we've paid and what we've committed to but if you look on the right side of the document you'll see where we were given a budget to work with and um, where we're significantly over on the modulars amount. Um, the first section is the parking lot, which really wasn't a topic of discussion. That's just CIP money, and we'll have to figure that one out on our own. Um, but the site work, the second block, and the modulars are the $260,000 that were given to us from the uh, school impact fees. So that's the piece that we're looking at and saying, oh gosh, you know, we really didn't do a very good job of guessing what this would cost and wondering if there's any way to come back and look for more there. On the back side, just for your information, we also have a small amount budgeted in our um, technology CIP budget for FY20 and our furnishing CIP. And that's just, again, a running tally of what we've been spending and um, what's still to come in those areas. But the, the big problem is in the just in that modulars block where there was there was a lot more to it than what we expected. So are these cost final costs? Are you still that work? The green is final, um, and the yellow is estimated, and we don't have all the bills in. We know, um, I think, ninety nine percent of of what bills are coming, and that's where the yellow comes in. Um, unless something turns up. Todd has told me today that we're still on track to get the modulars open within the next two weeks. Um, there's just a few finishing touches that need to happen. So um, as Sarah said, we weren't asking for any kind of decision at this point because we'd like to present you with final numbers. Um, and that will happen with, you know, by the end of November, certainly, when we get all the bills in. Um, but the, I think the question that's in our minds is, is there any availability of further school impact fees to offset this? And if not, then we've got other work to do. Okay, can I just ask you to, to and we should, I should know this, but what what did we approve? 260. 260, and, and you're coming at 271, is that it? Or what's the? Sorry, so, the yeah, impact, so this, is, this was paid for out of our CIP. Right. So it's just this that was covered by the tax fees. So if you add yeah, the expense here and here, okay. you get 260. Oh, okay. And so we're over by about like, like, 60,000. That would less than this is for a regular seat. Okay. And we can get the same as the Versus 260. Yeah. I think. And we can start around here at 320. Right, versus 260. Okay. Okay. So, yes. Kate, question? Sorry, having no, so I'm asking this on my behalf and Councillor uh, Fucci's behalf because I know he's interested in it. So, you have a requirement to have an enclosed walking space from the main building for portables? It's not, a, it's not a requirement. Okay. It's, okay. A, it's a safety decision, basically, okay. and um, also a sort of a, what do you call it exactly, but a facilities decision because it would be very difficult to get snow removal equipment and ice. Um, ice treatment back into that 40 foot space between the two buildings if you um, had a stick built hallway or no, we didn't if we had nothing if we had nothing so what right. we what we started with was we hoped that we'd be able to, to buy a stick built hallway correct and i feel like that was a, one of those topics of conversation through this process it was a topic okay. of conversation yeah when we found that a stick built hallway would cost us a lot more than what we had guessed and that we were already running over budget we started looking at the canvas mm -hmm. um, walkway cover, which is basically kind of like your fancy wedding tent that you get, yeah. you know, with the sides and the windows and so forth. And um, to put up one with uh, top and sides would have cost us around 20000 um, And our final decision was to put just the top and the poles in the 
supports that need to go with that. And so that's what you see on here. Uh, $10,700 main bay canvas is the last item in the green under um, that section <coughs> of paid or contracted. And then 2750 is the posts and mountings. Does it have portable sides that you can zip and close during the winter time? It has no sides at the moment. Okay, and how much was the stick built cost? Um, it was close to 40, I think. <coughs> Um, we had sort of budgeted, you see I put 30000 for the connector when we made our first presentation about yeah. it. Um, that was a little bit uh, naive, I think, in terms of construction costs as of right now. Um, but the, the big driving factor is that, first of all, we saw the campus connector at another school. We saw yeah. being used and it was it was nice and it was clean and it was it was well done and and seemed quite safe at a much lower price point and then also the fact that we were trying to save some money overall is there concern about icing because that's exposed or is that not a concern because not if it's covered if it's covered it should be easy to treat we can keep the snow off of it I mean it's not going to be ideal um, but it's also not an ideal situation to begin with is there discussions of putting the stick built section in the next year's budget to upgrade it, so to speak, or are right we now just... the discussion is to put the sides on in the next year's budget. Um, one of the issues with the sides uh, is that Todd's not sure that they can even do the sides in the in the colder weather, right? Because we have waited till it's gotten to freezing that there there may be some um, structural problems with that where they can do the sort of canopy tent piece. Uh, but the sides are evidently harder to fit when they're hard and the, the weather's cold. Um, so what we've said right now is we're putting up the cover, yep. the canopy, and that we would plan to add sides to it. Um, but and when you say sides, like a tough plastic side, right? A canvas or, side. A canvas side. Okay. Right, yeah. like the original proposal. Um, uh, but we're not side currently block. talking about anything stick built. The original proposal was canvas, or it was stick built, though, right? It was. Okay. It wasn't really determined, I think, but I think our perception was that we would be able to build something. This is not. I'm just. This is me asking. So this is. How does that? How did we underestimate the cost of that stick built? So like, who made? Who? How does that? How did it go from twenty? Thinking it was twenty thirty thousand to thirty thousand yeah. to forty thousand construction costs okay. basically. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think we've all kind of noticed what's going on with the economy. Yeah, sure. Right. And yeah. Uh, even with the modulars, they've told us that what we purchased this year for 164,000 will probably cost us 180,000 next year because yeah. just construction costs are out of control right now. But I mean, for me, I mean that that was a question I was going to ask. So now this is two sort of really important capital projects that have been, if you looked at the turf field, which was budgeted a million and came back and asked for a million six. You know, I think the learning is as we look at these and put numbers forward, we're probably better off being conservative um, in at the ask, or do we need to have a different process that we get these things under contract before we start? Because these are two pretty significant overruns. Um, well, I think that one of the time, one of the problems is timing, right? Because we were saying, oh my God, it's an emergency. We're in, you know, April, and we need to get this done. So we're running around not having actual quotes in place. We didn't have time to have the fire marshal's office come in and tell us what they no, need. No, no, no. But, but I'm just saying. But I think, I think that the advanced planning piece is critical, right? Yeah. So if, if what we've done with the FY20 budget is we've put in funding for two additional portables classrooms at, at eight corners, plus two classrooms at Pleasant Hill. And so instead of saying in April, we've got a crisis, we can take our time and get not only the enrollment projections, which will let us know whether we need those in the first place, but also the, the clear and solid quotes that will tell us what it's going to cost to take care of the project. I mean, the good news is that at any corners, if you do have to add two more classrooms, you've already got that infrastructure built. So that was, and that was the point of doing the extra slide. The two pad, yeah. The slab is already built for two. Um, you know, as far the as the been connections the that have been made between the main building and yeah. the you know sewer systems and the water and the and some of the HVAC connections to the main building, 
electricity, all of that stuff is kind of there. So it's almost of a, a little bit more of a plug and play for, mm -hmm. for that second set of classrooms. And my second question for a lot of the contract work, do we, does it go out to bid? Yeah, I was going to ask the same thing. I mean, uh, it depends on is what bad. it is. Respiro was uh, responsive to a bid, um, an RFP process. I mean, were there others that bid against? Um, interestingly, we only received the one bid. We had, um, I believe, three or maybe four contractors come out for the site visit. Because when we put the RFP out, we said, you know, come visit the site, come check us out, read the plans, see what the proposal is like. Um, and at the end of the day, when the bids were uh, were due, Vespara was the only one who bid on it. Hmm. Tight margin. Well, yeah, and you know, to what we were saying earlier, um, you know, we were talking earlier about the Wentworth project and how, at that time in 2013, 14, we were, the contractors were lining up and pleading with us to please give them some work, and now we've got a completely different situation where contractors are like, nah, I don't need it. So. so when will you be in a position to know what you need to ask for? Middle of November? Okay. For um, what the actual original bid? Yeah. I would say no later than the end of November. I'm hoping that you know if the work is done, the sooner the work is done, the sooner the bills come in and we can chase the bills. Um, but yeah, no later than the end of November and probably a little bit sooner than that. So do you expect the number to st will still be about that same gap or is it gonna get bigger or is it, you know, you have, you have other contingencies? Um, I, because I know the impact piece was a big one, the 50,000 that you found that you could, you could apply impact piece for that? Is that what I'm reading here no. for the pad? No, the total 260 that you guys allocated from impact fees was split from the pad to the modular. So I see. That, that, yeah. Okay. The right. total that you guys gave that, no. that we received for, from impact fees was 260. Right. And that's just the way that the budget was broken out. It was obviously a super simplistic budget. Um, the pad came in under budget, so that $3,000 dials down the 64 to 61 for a deficit because that's that's what made up the total of the 260 yeah. um, and you know to your question about how good we think our estimates are now I think we're, we're pretty close okay. um, and if anything we might come in a little bit less but um, I, I won't promise that I know the bottom line number until they're up and running um, so you the, uh, the furnishings your fourteen thousand dollars over under budget on the furnishings. Are we? Are you going to roll that towards the sixty four dollars shortfall? Sixty four thousand dollars shortfall, or Once how's we, that going to work? Uh, if we get the, you see the storage. Um, we're looking at sort of cubbies and shelves and yep. things like that for the for the kids and for the teachers. Once everything's in there, if we have yep. funding available, then definitely we could charge something off to that and. Um, for the tech, the same is true, but I'm not certain that we are actually going to have it. And why is there a student device line if the students are already there? So they're not going to, right? So the, the classroom technology. Right. And the K2s, the, um, the, oh, they're, are they they're in on the, carts. Okay. So they so belong to the room? They belong to the room. Okay. So you're right. I mean, if we're taking a kid from a room and we're putting them into <laughs> right. another like, room, I don't, why, then where it's, the, not, it's right. not a cost. But um, remember that we added teachers and we added classroom furnishings to accommodate more kids. Right. So this is basically the overall operating budget that we would have had whether we had a room to put them in or not. This right. was to add No, I get that. Teachers. Right. But, I mean, it, it, would it be... Is the natural move if if these come in under budget to apply them towards the sixty four? Is that just gonna happen? That's gonna happen. Yeah. Yes. If there is any money left. Right. That okay. was my understanding. Yep. This will be the bridge. Then what what we'll be interested to hear from you guys one is there are there still impact fees that we can access and what do you think what is your appetite? What do you think the town council's appetite would be for approving? So I guess a question just the county wise, but the bills need to get paid, so it must be going against your fund balance at this point. Um, so well, Kate has some notes on the far right hand side with you know some contingency plans that we've discussed at the community at the um, at our finance committee level, but 
you know, shifting money and, and doing line item transfers doesn't doesn't always feel good. And, you know, mm. it, puts our, it puts some of our accounts in not such great places. Yeah, I think from an, an operating perspective, when you're talking about capital projects, um, really the norm is to spend what you haven't got yet and then to fund it later. Um, and that's true of any project that we do in the current fiscal year. I get a budget of $100,000 to do $500,000 to do roofing. And I spend the money out of the town's resources. And then Ruth goes out and does a bond issue in, in May and we reimburse ourselves. Depending on the dollar amount, I mean, we couldn't do that with the uh, safety building, obviously, but. Right, but our, our typical method is to float through operating funds and then fund capital expenses later in the year when we know exactly what they are, rather than going out and borrowing money and not having spent it yet. Yeah. I was going to ask that, too. Are these fu funds like, so you would say, go out, I don't know, $10,000, dollars $10, if we were able to charge those off, those yellow ones? that are marked over here so yeah it's i mean it's all a question of of as sarah said what's the appetite of the town to be able to tap into any any, any more impact fees obviously as peter says we're paying the bills so if we have to cut off something else to make up that money in the school budget then that's what we'll do yes i mean i guess the question is asking i thought at one point i thought because of the school budget's different than a missile budget that you could only spend money that get as you did your allocations that's the but, general fund operating budget right so that when you said could charge to operating that so from that you couldn't really charge it to operating could you because it would it yeah would, i could but i'd say okay well now todd instead of having money in that budget to do this contract service work for the rest of the school year you now have five thousand dollars less but it would mean you'd have to but from that, I wouldn't we, add to the operating budget. But you'd have to cut services, though, right? right? Yeah, that's right. You'd, yeah, you'd, you'd have to I cut. Have so, to so that's so I'd that's what I'm trying to get yes. at. That if we don't do something, I'd have to make a trade off. I'd have to you, save that money from doing something else. Right. So you'd have to cut some money. other services you had budgeted to do it. If you get it from the impact fees, you wouldn't have to do that. So I guess that's exactly. Correct. So I think when you ask the appetite, the appetite would be around what would be some of those things you could do and what is that impact versus if it's going to have a detrimental impact then that changes the conversation so i, I think that's the answer as you guys get closer it would be just a proposed plan about what you could do to cover it within the existing budget and if you can't then what do we do with impact fees and other things right there could be savings too a high, in a budget a hyper approach maybe you do right like right built in certain areas and right there's yep. a piece that you just can't because you right. for whatever reason. Right. right. I spent so long selling those impact fees, I'll, I'll get reacquainted with the analysis. So yeah, I got we'll another job. Yeah. Thank Kate, you. Kate, the, the uh, HVAC CIP budget, mm -hmm. when is that work actually happening? Is it? So it's a CIP budget for HVAC, right? So for improvements on the HVAC, is that? Do you mean what are we currently doing? Yeah, what? Are, yeah, I guess what are, um, are we doing it right now? Yeah, we've and, got we've got work going on at the middle school. That's and, our big. And do we know what that's what? Like, can that absorb seven grand? Is that on budget, over budget, under budget? That's all on budget, and it's also in um, a phased approach. Yeah. So part of the funding that we're using was to actually do a wholesale replacement of some. Um, of the mechanical systems and the controls yeah. but then part of it was also to replace items as they fail and of course you know they fail at the worst possible time sure. and you know you you hope that you have the, the funds available yeah. um, but there's a certain amount of contingency in that yeah so yeah so, so would it is it fair to say that it's not it's not reckless to try to sneak that seven grand into the cip the hvac cip or I wouldn't call any of it reckless. Okay. <laughs> she would have added that no. That's fair enough. <laughs> Keep forgetting I'm dealing with like, you know, accounting. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I've been called many a thing, Paul, but I'm not sure reckless, reckless. is reckless. All right, fair enough. Maybe fair maybe enough. when I was twenty two. Yeah. Right. I'm just still called this so often that I just assume. You just, <laughs> we're, all, we're all there. No, I, I think that, you know, we're what we're saying is those are possible that we have possibilities yeah, and yeah. that we would make whatever hard decisions we need to make and we would do whatever we need to do to make this work 
Um, however, knowing that these impact fees exist for this purpose, sure. yeah. uh, I think we would be remiss in not coming back and saying, right. hey, we got the number yeah. wrong, right. and can we still make the argument that that's a, a, an appropriate use of those numbers? Right. Right. So my temperature would be like I would, I here's my temperature, and then I'm done. So. <laughs> Moving things to the operating budget, I don't think is smart necessarily, or I, that's not something I think we should do. I think if we have some funds, we could, we you know, save the operating budget. But moving some things to some of the CIP, because those are still, my guess, are moving numbers and moving targets, and there might be some ways to come in under budget for those other projects. So my temperature would be leave the operating budget alone, but to see if there's ways to save the other CIP items. That's my personal temperature. Okay, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, say we did move move seven thousand dollars to the H back CIP, and then something failed. Mm -hmm. Are the impact fees available right. for projects like a failed boiler? That was yeah. Um, well. That's a good question. I mean, I think the impact fees are not part of our budget, right? So, no. I no, think that I think the question is that they're limited in what they can be used yeah, for. Yeah, it's very specific. It's, it's, it's fixed, really structure. it's with, fixed with, structures, right? I mean, it's, it's bricks and mortar. The, meet the demand of the, meet the new demand of growth and blah blah blah. So, yeah, yeah. Unless it's the okay, H back. Yeah. Unless it's an H back. We can make that happen. They're not allowed to. <laughs> so, so I guess. Um, but yeah, so that's I my point. Yeah, we right. couldn't use. We couldn't that, use the that's impact fees. We can't then later on go. We and couldn't use the impact fees to back up a decision that we made right. in the CIP. Thank you for clarifying. If it doesn't apply, because the CIP, I mean, because the impact fees are only accessible for very specific capital improvements. And the portable for because of yes. direct Growth. impact. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I guess my temperature would be yeah, certainly come back but look at the operating budget if there are some things where you can make trade-offs that aren't going to really impact you know things may timing or planning or other things if there's ways to do it without impacting delivery of services within the operating budget that'd be the, the first place and then come back to us with what what might be the, the remaining nuts and and we can talk about that I would think, Don. We're, we're yeah, I'm, I have my up there as well. I think that you've, you've done a lot of the work already. Try to draw it down to as small scale as possible, and uh, this, I appreciate the, the heads up on this. It'll help us get our heads around it and support you and and what you feel you need to do. Uh, but I, it is another reminder, though. It's just uh, people have referred to the other, to the turf and other projects. It's uh, in this environment, things run over. Right. They run over by materials and by labor, and and also because we haven't really gone far enough with detailing out what it's going to take to to build the thing. So you know the walkways, and now we got sidewalls instead of stick built runway and stuff like that. So I, you know, whatever we can do, and I know we brought a tremendous pressure, and this thing was a mad dash to begin with. But uh, you know, the more time we spend on the front end, really trying to drill down on what we need, uh, it'll it'll save us pain and suffering in the end. That's possible. So that's just the learning I have from this. You get an order. I mean, I mean that. that's true um, for all capital projects. As we estimate stuff, it's Todd and I were talking actually just just recently about what our timetable will be for. Do we need more portable space? Um, we have money in the twenty FY twenty budget, which is great because we don't have to do the emergency thing. Um, if we need to order them. We can order them sooner and not have and, and be yeah. clear on what the costs are going to be. But I think that's a, a conversation for this um, finance and long range planning yeah. about what is enrollment looking like and what what really are we going to need. Um, Remind me, Kate, what's in the FY20 yeah. yes. budget? It's two more for eight corners and two for Pleasant Hill. That's yes. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pleasant yes. Hill. And has the promise was a, only if needed. Right. Yes. And Pleasant Hill already has a slab bill. Um, that was there from back in the day. Um, so it's a little bit different story. Um, it, not to get into the weeds, but it wouldn't be connected. It wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't have running water and some of the things that the eight corners wanted to do. 
This is really tough on this modulars thing because it seems like we really sort of have institutionalized modulars, and, you know, oh, yeah. and for you know, I, I, mean, I know there are a lot of reasons for that, but uh, just there's something about that that does bother me. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's where, well. and I know it comes down to dollars and cents, and uh, big big schools projects are expensive, but gee whiz, you know, in, in um, a five year time frame, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just the lag period between you yeah. when you need it and get it built. Yeah. So, so all y'all listening. Yep. The building steering committee. <laughs> 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 yeah. Let's say. Yeah. Steering committee. Steering committee. Yeah. Building steering committee met last so, night. So okay, so I gotta ask. So so I got one more question. Then. Why aren't we? Since we have 160 allocated for the portables that we don't know if we need or not on that same slab, why aren't we out allocating the overage to that one? Because we won't know if we need them until we have them. Yeah, but what? But then why not come back and ask for impact fees for that? So do we, do we move portable. forward and use what we've already put for those springtime you, Like, why wouldn't we do that? Because then you're asking for impact fees for portables again. And it's a very direct ask for the growth. It's an option. I think we could do that. As, yeah. yeah. Because option. then if you don't need the portables, then, yay, we're actually over budget, uh, under budget on this whole process. And it would give credence to the fact we keep saying, like, if we need them, if we need them, but everybody, myself, I feel like I'm hearing, like, yeah, of course we're going to need them. Like, it would be nice to actually say, okay, we actually don't know if we need this money, so let's use it. We do run the risk of, if we do need them, having the same sort of hurry up issue and ordering them late. So I think we could do that, but there would have to be some sort of. I mean, you guys are super on top of it, right? I mean, yeah, no, I'm being serious. I, I guess, like, I don't think we would, I guess we would. We would would we need to have a full town council BOE workshop? Would we need to like go through the steps that we did last time, or could we expedite some of the process? I'm sure, we could expedite. I mean, we've done. I mean, you could literally steps. change the slide. You know, the slides yeah. are made. So, do you think that's a, what do you think about that idea? I don't know. I mean, I guess just from a technical point of view, is there any? I was I mean, thinking that same thing. I mean, it's. I mean, it's just from the. It's I mean, not, it's not I understand. Budget. It's I mean, CIP budget, right? Right. The council right. has voted that this is our CIP budget. And I guess the question is, to what extent does the council believe that they are, that we are adhering to every detail that was outlined in that budget? Because the budget does say, the budget document says, this is for a modular A and modular B. So you, yeah. could, go, you I mean, could go with the I mean, tiny tiny processes and corners modulars, which is pretty generic, yeah. or you could go with the description. The would be, so long as it's used for the the general budget authorization. I mean, if you were to go up and buy a school bus with that money, I, that, that doesn't work. But I but think it's, you're in, it's all under the it's same all in umbrella. Keeping with the same intent. Intent and in, in authorization. And if it's needed for eight corners, and that's the one that we're worried about overrunning, I think that right. I would use that one and not like the Pleasant right. Hill one. Right. We're so. using an eight corners portable budget to cover an eight corner right. portable budget overage. Mm -hmm. We also don't know if we're going to use the second half of the budget. And in addition to that, we could rather, if we don't do it, we keep the current course where we might be running into coming back and asking for money for this overage and asking for overage for this phase two. Mm -hmm. as, opposed to just as, as opposed to if we let it, and it would be part of next year's course, if we let it play its course, it's one ask. Because we might say, we might be looking at, oh, the portables were over budget. Oh, now we're going to build the second ones, which is fine because we approved them. Oh, those are over budget town now too. Wouldn't it be nice if we took care of this and then just had one ass down the road? You, I mean, you just said yourself that the portables that we order could be 180, not 160. Right, but we budgeted the 180. No, no. Oh, I thought we were 160. Okay, so no, one. We, we budgeted okay. the 15% increase. <laughs> <laughs> because so, we learned something. Learned. So I, I think a long-winded answer to the appetite the temperature would be there's probably a solution but we probably you know as we get closer need to kind of talk those things through i mean i think i mean technically for me being once upon a time an accountant it's like okay if you have a capital budget for a fire truck it's for a specific is it for fire the wheels truck. of a different fire truck yeah so right. i mean i just so part of this is also perception i mean either way the funds need to be made available is just what's the best way to do it in the optics okay. and, and yeah. we yeah. can have that conversation but I think I think it would. Sense. Yeah. Okay. The chances are this is going to be at some point within next year's budget process anyway. So the overage may not be there; it'll just be a budget item. Right. Yeah. 
Well, no, that's good. <laughs> Tom made a facial expression that I wasn't, I wasn't quite sure what that was. Oh, I think that's too. Do you mean because we won't be installing the new portables if we do? We won't be installing them until the spring, so we should budget more for that. Well, if, you'll have, if you need more money, you'll have the whole budget process to, to put, put it in the budget. The FY21 right. budget. Which we would Whether you either fund with bonding or you fund from. Right. Uh, yeah. So if we even if we get the portables, the new portables, if we order them and get them much earlier, then we could still have summertime money to right. to finish the job. Money. <laughs> That's what it's called. <laughs> so I want it's like, you know, iced tea money. Iced tea money. I like that. We have one more agenda item that was kind of grandly stated, you know, future mission purpose of uh, this this group. Uh, it could be as simple as do we need a meeting? Uh, uh, or do we envision this group, you know, going forward or meeting on a annual basis? But I didn't really. It's just, it was just a reasonable break point. I think we'll need another meeting, uh, maybe not necessarily for the budget, but potentially discuss this. But I think we can probably wait to schedule it until the new committees are formed because I don't know if they're going to look the same. So, we can do a after new committees. Yeah, I think that's fair. Right. After the yeah. new committees are formed. Yeah. When are those okay. usually done? Yeah. Uh, voted on first week of December. Mm -hmm. So that gives us a slight reprieve and right. reconvene. And then we'll. And we should have final numbers, right? By that point? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And I'm so the committees so are usually set just a smidge earlier than that. Is that right? Or is it about the same? Um, It'll probably maybe be the, the second. Yeah, maybe it's the second meeting of November. November. That sounds right. Which actually? Because you elect the chair and then you. Well, no. I we did we elect the chair the first night? It's kind of. A well, it is kind of close because. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, right. It is right? a blur. And, and it, is it may have been blur. special circumstances See, because there weren't yeah. any committees on the school board at the right. time. We didn't have any. There right. weren't any people. No people. Um, so, the action on the. Leaving the, the table is that Sarah is going to write a draft of a message that we're going to both resolution. deliver. A joint resolution. And how about Jess, Sarah, and Peter work on that? Yeah, that's fine. We don't need Don. six yeah. chefs in this. I mean, sorry, uh, Don. Sarah and Don work on that. I'm sorry, Don. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't need so many chefs in the kitchen. Is what you're saying. <laughs> that's fine. And do you guys want us to message that to both town council and board of education? or? We can share it at our respective meetings. How do you guys want to distribute that? Finish it, and then we'll share it, and then share it electronically. Share it yeah, I mean, if it was jointly offered, sure it offered yeah, I sure. think that would be great. Yeah. And then, you know, here, this will be discussed, but yeah. here's Hurley heads up of what we're thinking. And but we need to do this on Wednesday, next Wednesday. Yep. Yeah. So we need it before Wednesday. Yeah. Cool. And, and then the day after election day. Yep. Sixth. And then if your question was, and I think I'd defer it to the group, but I think a joint finance committee. It's taken a while for us to kind of come together and to start. I think it'd be a shame not to continue it because I think it could, as it develops and as the relationships develop, it could be helpful going forward, but that both sides would have to feel that way. So. I 100% agree. Me too. I just think, yeah. I think that should be the final comment in the message. But the good point. see the value in this process and we encourage it to go okay. forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Just to send yeah. off. Just and to send off. But I think it's been, I mean, it's been, it's been a process. <laughs> but I think it's helpful. Great. Just the fact we got through the conversation tonight is good. So I think okay. we'll, we'll adjourn. We adjourn? Yeah. Thanks, okay. everybody. Thank Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Tom. Peter, thanks for driving the conversation. Yeah.